tabernacle were people. In 2019, CBN News interviewed Dr. Scott Stripling, the director of the excavation going on in ancient Shiloh. This year, Stripling brought us up to speed on what's happened here since we first visited the project. Tell us, we were there at season one. What's, what's new? What's happened since then? Well, in season one, our, our hypotheses were just formulating. Um, we thought that we had a monumental building uh, up here from the period of the tabernacle. We thought that this could be a, a gate complex because there was no glossy in this section. Um, since then, we've come way down, uh, five meters or so, maybe six meters in some places. And so now we can see the various structures that are here, and indeed we can now uh, say that this is very likely the, the gate that's referred to in the Bible. And that's pretty big stuff. And what happened at the gate? Why, why is this so important? Well, the Bible tells us that Eli is in the gate of Shiloh when he gets the news that the Ark of the Covenant has been captured, that his sons have been killed. Uh -huh. He falls over backwards and dies in the gate. Yeah. So it's a, a, a function that's mentioned in the Bible. So we were very curious if we would come across it. Shiloh is not only where Eli lived and died, but also the place where Joshua divided the promised land between the 12 tribes, where Hannah prayed for a son who became the prophet Samuel, and where the tabernacle of the Lord stood for nearly 400 years. Stripling gave us a tour of the site and took us to perhaps their most significant discovery. This is where you came to connect with God. Jerusalem remains a pagan city for another mm -hmm. 300 years. The ark is here. The tabernacle is here, and this is where you came to connect with God. Uh huh. And you've, uh, you, you believe you've found actually the tabernacle. Well, you know, I'm not ready to, to say I know for certain, but I'll tell you what we do have is a building that is matching the dimensions of the uh -huh. tabernacle. It's from the Iron One period, which is the tabernacle period of Eli and Samuel. And you're actually standing right now, Chris, on, on this wall right here. So this entire area is this massive monumental building, orients east-west, and it's divided on a two-to-one ratio like the tabernacle was. Uh huh. So east-west is what the Bible says it faced? That's right. The Bible says that. And two-to-one, what does that mean? Well, the holy place and the most holy place. Yeah. So the, the holy of holies, if we're correct in our theory, would be right in here. This between these walls would be where the Ark of the Covenant was. Yes. Can we go in? Let's go. Come on. <clears throat> All so right. What so are we walking into right now? This this is the the wall that would separate the holy from the most holy. Okay. So you're entering into the holy of holies. All right. So there's this big wall on your right. Down here, you can see where we've reached the bottom. This is preserved to 2.1 meters and this is floor level. So this whole area in here about where we're standing, come on with me here. All right. You're probably standing where the Ark of the Covenant was. Why does that suit you? <laughs> it makes me feel, uh, well, profound for yeah. one. Well, yeah. me too. Yeah. Um, How do you feel when you're here? There's a sense of awe. I just have to tell you, uh, professionally as an academic, it's I'm in awe. And then as an evangelical Christian, I'm in awe, you know, to, to have the privilege to be able to excavate a site like this. What I take from this is that God did something in history. He recorded it for us in the Bible. We have evidence of it here. One of the great things about our faith is that you can question it. You know, God's ego isn't bruised. People have questions, viewers do, that's honest, you know, express those. And I would just invite people to look at that evidence. And if they've bought into the idea that the Bible's mythology or it's not historical, I would encourage them to look at what we're finding here at Shiloh, read the text, pray about it, decide for themselves. And so this is where the Bible comes to life? This is what we do. Mm -hmm. We don't just walk the Bible, we dig the Bible here at ancient Shiloh. Mm -hmm. As we dig into the soil, we are literally seeing the evidence of what life was like in biblical times. And nearby, you also have a bone, a site of bones. We well, I tell you what, we're in the bone business, Chris. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you what it's all about. Okay. <laughs> and this path is going to lead us to where the bone deposit is that we've been talking about. So, this, the the people working over here, are doing something they'll never forget the rest of their lives. I mean they are uncovering evidence of the sacrificial system. These were animals 
that brought expiation. I mean, it brought about the forgiveness of sin for people mm -hmm. as they connected with God in this manner. So you'll see it for yourself. The pottery and the bones, they tell an unmistakable story that matches what we read in the biblical text. This entire area underneath our feet, Chris, this is unexcavated. Underneath your feet and my feet is about this much of solid bone waiting to be excavated. Bone on top of bone on top of bone. And we have microstratigraphy in this area so we can see that the deposition is laid down over a long period of time, just like the Bible says. And what kind of bones would we find here? Sheep, goat, cattle, and disproportionately from the right side of the animal. It's like just this morning, we're seeing disproportionate jaw bones from the right side as opposed to the left. You described it before, but again, why is the right side so significant? Well, the priests are the ones who live here, and Leviticus 7 tells us that the right side of the animal is the priest's portion. So I can't make this stuff up, you know? You got 100,000 bones and they're disproportionate. Give me another explanation. Mm. It just happens to coordinate with what the Bible says. At the end of the workday, a shofar sounds. That's when all the staff and volunteers gather to wash the day's finds. CBN News talked with some of the team that makes the excavation happen. The dig includes people from 13 countries and 16 universities. It's just been an amazing experience. Um, it's just kind of sends chills on your, up your body some days um, because you just think about the people that have been here before you. The further down we dig, it just is even more impressive. It's just been an awesome experience. Susie Skypes is digging in what may have been the Holy of Holies. I mean, I never thought that I'd be standing here or sitting here or digging here. Um, it's just been um, something that, you know, you read about in the Bible, but who would have ever thought you'd have been here in person? You've been here since the very beginning. What is it like for you to be here and, and to see what you have uncovered? It's really changed the way I read the Bible. Um, as I've come, I've been coming and excavating and, um, or even just being in the land and learning the routes and the, the ancient roads. And when I read the Bible, I can picture it. I, I read, you know, about Shiloh, I read about Eli and Hannah, and, and I, I know where that happened. I, I can picture it um, and it's just here. So for me, it's very impactful and it's, it's really changed my understanding uh, of some of those details in the Bible that you might just read over and gloss over um, but they really make a lot more sense to me now. Jordan oversees the dig at the sacrificial bone deposit. I, I dig here and I, I uncover these things. Being a believer, um, you know, I see these bones of uh, this, this sacrificial system that, that for centuries people came and, and gave this offering that they knew they were going to have to come and do again every year, this constant, constant sacrifice. Uh, and just knowing that Jesus came to, to fulfill that, just it brings you know all of this full circle and really does, it's humbling to me to do this. The excavation uses some of the latest innovations in archeology, span including wet sifting on site, which allows them to uncover many more ancient artifacts. The work is meticulously documented with the latest technology. The day's finds are identified and cataloged. They expect to be on site digging for several more years. Why is this so important? Well, I think there, there's a, an arena of ideas and we're a part of that whether we wanna be or not. And this idea that the Bible is not a reliable historical source is a fantasy that uh, has been fabricated and many people have bought into this. They don't think that they can trust the Bible. Um, I'll tell you what, the Bible is my go-to source in this part of the world. These are biblical sites. And time and time again, we find a correlation between what we have in the text and what we find in the material culture. And so while we publish scientifically and peer-reviewed journals and final publications, I think it's also important that our interpretations um, reflect that the, the biblical text can be trusted. And what's the lesson for us today? Well, if you could trust what God did in history, then you could trust Him today and you can trust him for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we have to remember that God loves us. He has a plan for humanity. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Ancient Shiloh.